G'day guys. In today's video, I'm cracking open an Azus F555L. Now this one, I will be upgrading the hard drive in it, or that is at least my plan. And I need somewhere to put your screws, a Phillips head screwdriver, and proceed by taking out the screws. Now I'm not sure if these will all be the same size. Nope. The ones in the middle here are fairly long, narrow screws. Where the screws for the hinges are much fatter screws. Skinny. Skinnier. Skinnier. There we go, so two fat screws, small, uh, long, narrow, long, narrow, long, narrow, long, narrow, skinny, small. Now, from here, I believe we have to take the keyboard off. So I'll get my pizza cutter. Go along like so. So the top comes off rather than the bottom coming off on this particular model. Go. Do the same down along the other side. There we go. Once we're in, we're going to need to disconnect a couple of connectors. I'm just going to use my fingernail and flick on that connector, so it's in the up position. If I zoom you guys in, that may help. So it's now in the open, it's in the closed. Open. Similar thing with the keyboard here. I'll use a it's a smaller screwdriver just to flick, that, flick the black plastic up and push that down. And from there, we are now in. So sadly, sadly this isn't overly repairable. You have a very baby battery down here. As you can see, there is potential upgrade to a larger cell battery. The memory is built into the board right here. The charger port is built in right here. Next to the power button. So if you damage a charger port, you will need to do a full board removal and a replacement of the jack. Now, there's really not much else to it, sadly. Going over, we have the DVD burner, which if you undo this screw here, you can come out. We have one very dusty fan, which I will get an air compressor onto that to clean it. And lastly, we have the 2.5 inch hard drive, which is based here. So to be able to get that one out, we have to remove this IO flex connector. So a nail under the, the cream colored bit and flick it up and then we should be able to pull the, wiggle the cable back. It is going to be taped onto here. But also, to get this out, we have to remove this board here, which is held in by a single screw. Take out that single screw, and we should have some luck removing it from there. There we go. I'm just going to pull on the cable to lift it up the hard drive. Actually, maybe not. Do be careful not to, not to tear your connector as this is stuck down very heavily. There we go. We move this out of the way. Undo both these screws here. One, two. And slide that to the right.
Now I did cheat and already take out the hard drive just there. But putting it in is pretty straightforward and also removing the hard drive. I'm going to be installing a crucial BX500 two and a half inch drive to replace the one terabyte that was already in there. It'll pretty much sit like this. So we want these teeth to match up with this connector. If I can angle it so you guys can see. Not quite. There we go. So we have the short end over this side. So I'll have that drive upside down. There we go. And that's going to slide back into position. If I can get you guys back in view. So Phelps head screwdriver, putting the four screws back in. One. Two. Three, and I reckon the computer's sitting on the fourth. Let's have a look. No, it just magicked away from me. There you go, attached to the speaker. There we go. Put it here, there, slide it forward, put in the two screws here. So in the end I will be using a program called a Cronus True Image and a USB or with its recovery software installed under a USB. And I'll be using one of these to then transfer the old data onto the new hard drive. But from here you could probably do a fresh install of Windows if you do choose. Now yeah, we'll have to just go under and there. Like so. And one screw right here. Then next, we'll need to feed the cable back through into here. line up properly. There we go. Then push the clamp down. Stick that down. And then we get near the end here. So the next challenge we've got here will be reconnecting the keyboard connector and also just out of view these two connectors. It's going to be challenging for me to actually capture that on film for you guys. So these connectors both operate very similar to the hard drive connector down here. As in you slide the ribbon cable in and then pull the tab down. I did flip this around. I might be able to capture it for you guys. I'm going to go to the keyboard connector first, for no real particular reason. Oh, actually, mainly because it's the shorter of the two. You can potentially grab onto this blue bit here and try and feed it in, that will help you. But I fear the angle that I'm on, it won't. And I think, think I just fluked it. Excellent. And now while we've got it in close proximity, we defeat it over to here. There we go. It's in, tab goes down, gently fold it down, and then a seal up from there. Now, before you fully seal it up though, I would recommend turning it on just to make sure your keyboard is connected and your trackpad is connected as well, rather than putting it together, putting all the screws in and finding out it doesn't work. So from here, the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna test this out before I actually go ahead and do that and put all the screws in. But just so you remember, the 
thin little screws, one, two, three, four. The longer variety of narrow screws, one, two, three, four. And the two stumpier fat screws, one, two. Anyway, that is me opening up an Asus F555L and installing a SSD in there. Hope this helps you and I'll see you guys later. Bye.